Some of the information is based upon research derived from the information that I saw. For instance, in the documents that I saw, it was stated that President Eisenhower had commissioned a group called the Jason Scholars, which was stated to have been a secret society of scholars, to research the deception, lies, facts, truth, and get at the root and the real truth of the alien question. It also stated that there was a group of 12 men formed by NSC Memo 5410 and that the study group was formed by NSC Memo 5411 and that there was another NSC memo issued to cover the actions of these men and explain the reasons why such prominent men were meeting on a regular basis and that NSC memo was 5412-1 and 5412-2. 5412-1 was implemented in March of 1955, 5412-2 in November of 1955. Anyone who knows how correspondence and executive orders and executive memos are written knows that you do not write a memo 5412 in March and then in November tack a second part onto it. The memo was originally really written in 1954. I'm going to go through the whole history. I'm going to have to leave a few things out simply because it's going to be impossible to cover everything in the hour and a half that I have. Before I begin, I would like to read two quotes to you. The first is attributed to Mr. Alastair Cook, who said, quote, I'll be astounded if this planet is still going 50 years from now. I don't think we'll reach 2,000. It would be miraculous, unquote. Winston Churchill said, and I quote, we seem to be moving drifting steadily against our will, against the will of every race and every people and every class, towards some hideous catastrophe. Everyone wishes to stop it, but they do not know how. What do you think he was referring to? Ronald Reagan stated on October 18, 1983, in a meeting with Thomas Dine, who is the executive director of the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. And I quote Ronald Reagan, You know, I turn back to your ancient prophets in the Old Testament and the signs foretelling Armageddon, and I find myself wondering if, if we're the generation that is going to see that come about. I don't know if you've noted any of those prophecies lately, but believe me, they certainly describe the times we're going through. Now, ladies and gentlemen, during this talk that I'm going to give you, I'm going to explain to you the history of this phenomenon, who the secret government really is, and I will name them by name, beginning group, the study group. I will tell you who they are today. I'm going to tell you what this is all about. I'm going to tell you who's selling drugs to your children, and I'm going to tell you why the United States government is afraid for you to find out what the truth is regarding UFOs. <laughs> I'm going to skip over the early saucer recovers, recoveries, but there are many more than what you would expect. The early saucers, yeah. is this any better? There were many more saucer crashes and down craft than what you have realized. There were many more alien bodies recovered, and there were more live aliens recovered than what you are aware of. But that's not important. The important thing is, is that they occurred, not how many and not where. The important thing is that they occurred. And those of you who want to argue over how many and where and how many bodies are wasting the time of everyone else, because that's not important. What's important is that they occurred. And there are two crashes that are so important that the government will go to any lengths 
to prevent you from finding out. And those are two crashes which occurred near the city of Aztec, New Mexico. Why? Because both of those crash craft contained human body parts. And they are deathly afraid of a national panic. Because of this, there was a very, very tight security blanket screwed down tight over all of the alien question, the down craft, the fact that they were here, the technology that we were recovering. Some crafts, strangely enough, were not damaged at all. But we could not recognize anything that we had previously known as mechanical, electrical, hydraulic, or any other thing that we knew of, except eventually we discovered that the craft contained a small reactor approximately the size of a large football or a small basketball, which was said to be a clean reactor. And the craft, this particular craft, used or seemed to use water as fuel. Now, how that all works, I don't know. I am not a nuclear physicist. Thank God. <clears throat> a special group of America's top scientists were organized under the name Project Sign in December of 1947 to study the phenomena. There was no such thing at that time as MJ-12. <coughs> the whole nasty business was contained within the shroud of secrecy. Project Sign evolved into Project Grudge in December of 1948. A very low-level collection and disinformation project named Blue Book was formed under Grudge. Sixteen volumes were to come out of Grudge, including the controversy of Grudge 13, which I and Bill English saw read and revealed to the public. Blue teams were put together to recover the crash discs and dead or alive aliens. The blue teams were later to involve into alpha teams under Project Pounce and Project Pluto. During these early years, the United States Air Force and the Central Intelligence Agency exercised complete control over the alien secret. The Air Force was later to be dropped because it was a young service and had no political power and could not overcome the power of the Army and the Navy. In fact, the CIA was formed by presidential executive order, first as a Central Intelligence Group for the express purpose of dealing with the alien presence. Later, the National Security Act was passed, establishing it as the Central Intelligence Agency. The National Security Council was established to oversee the intelligence community and especially the alien endeavor. It was not created specifically to form national policy. In fact, you can say that the National Security Council was the forerunner of MJ-12. And there was another group between MJ-12 and the National Security Council, which is to come later. A series of National Security Council memos and executive orders removed the CIA from the sole task of gathering foreign intelligence and slowly but thoroughly legalized direct action in the form of covert activities at home and abroad.